Hello everybody, I'm Meet Bagdev, a program manager on the SQL Server team. In this video, I'm going to cover what you can do with SQL Server and Python. First, we'll go over the connectors available for Python and then talk about what's new. We will then jump into demos that go through how to install the connector using pip on Ubuntu, run a few queries from a Python script, get a Django app working, and last but not the least, get a sneak peek into Jupyter Notebooks and SQL Server. Today, the connectivity landscape includes both Microsoft-developed and open-source-developed connectors. These connectors allow you to connect from all operating systems to all SQL products on-premises and in the cloud. Our focus today will be on Python, which can be used on Windows, Linux, and Mac from SQL running anywhere. As you can see, you can use PyMS SQL or PyODBC to connect to SQL, in this video, we will focus on PyODBC. Okay, let's talk about what's new with Python and SQL Server. You can now enjoy compatibility with Python 3.5 and Django 1.10, which are the latest versions. We have also been training our support engineers with the Python stack, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email, tweet, or give our support team a call. We have also added connectivity for SQL Server with the Jupyter Notebooks on Azure. Uh, now, let's dive into some demos that will give you a sneak peek into how you can get started with SQL Server and Python. In this demo, we're going to talk about how to use Python with SQL Server. Uh, before we do that, we need to install the Python connectors uh, that's required to connect to SQL Server. So we're going to use PyODBC and its prerequisites, which would be the Microsoft ODBC connector. So to install the prerequisites and the connector, all you really need to do is copy these four lines of code into your terminal. So we're going to do that one by one. All right, so it's requesting the keys right now. Then let's run a quick update. All right. And then let's go ahead and install the ODBC connector. All right, so the ODBC connector was installed. Next, let's go ahead and install PyODBC. All right, so PyODBC was installed as well. So at this point, we need we have everything we need to go ahead and get started with Python and SQL Server. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try connecting to SQL Server using a very simple script. All the script is going to do, it's going to query the version and the OS of, on which you're running your SQL Server. Uh, it's pretty simple. You change the server to the, the server name that you have, the database that you want to connect to, username, password, and just mention the query you want to run. So I already have the script done, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Then we're going to jump back to the terminal and run the Python script. Bingo, there you can see I'm running the SQL Server preview on my CentOS Linux VM, and that's my version number. Uh, jumping back to the script, um, we ran a very simple select query, but let's say you want to do something complicated. You want to insert a row of data, delete something, update something. All of that could be done by changing this one single line. So that's pretty much sums it up for our first demo. Next, we're going to jump into a Django app. We're going to try to get that to work with SQL Server and run it locally and see some results. So for the Django app, we're going to use a very cool open source Django application called Bootcamp. Bootcamp was written using Django. It's a very simple application. All it lets you do is uh, tweet, write questions and answers, and show you the feeds. It's essentially a minified enterprise social network. The stack is pretty simple. It runs against um, the latest version of Django, Python 2.7, has Bootstrap and jQuery. So if you were to get this code working on your machine, you would just clone our SQL Server samples repository. For this video, I've already cloned this code base. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right back to Visual Studio Code. So for to get Django to work with SQL Server, you essentially need to modify this JSON object called databases. 
This is located inside settings.py, and it's pretty simple. All you really do is change the engine name, which would be by default SQLite. So you would change that to sqlserver.pyodbc. Then you would update the database name. So I'm going to use a database called Django, which I pre-created. For user, I'm just going to use the SA user. Password would be connect 2016. And host would be your server. So this could be a named instance, or it could be an IP address, or if you're using Azure, it could be the one that you get from the portal. All right, go ahead and save that, mention the port, um, and that's pretty much it. Let's jump right back into the terminal. So I'm currently in the SQL Server Samples folder that I'd cloned inside the Django folder. Uh, all you really need to do at this point is run a migration. All right, so it, as you can see, it's applying all the migration. At this point, what's happening is Django is creating a bunch of tables for you in the database. This happens because Django's ORM takes all the objects that the open source ent enterprise social framework that we're using creates on the back end. So as you can see, we created some tables called auth, questions, feeds, activities, content types, so on and so forth. Once we run the migration, all you really do is serve the app locally. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, it says we have started the development server. That's my address. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and copy that. Open a new window. Bingo. So bootcamp, that's the app we wanted to run. Um, let's go ahead and sign up. All right, so I just created an account for myself and seems like I came in. So it shows me in the feed that Meet has just joined the network. Uh, I can post a question, write some articles, so on and so forth. So let's just say I want to go ahead and write a question. All right, so we're going to go ahead and post. All right, beautiful. So as you can see, we posted our very first question on this social network platform. Uh, now let's go ahead and jump back to our favorite tool, SSMS, and see if any of this data actually got stored. So as you can see, we have our Django database here. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that. Um, so let's see if our user is stored here. So let's see, right click. There you go. As you can see, meet be the user that we just created with the timestamp. The email uh, is active, so on and so forth. Let's see if our question that we just asked is also in the database. All right, what's the weather like today, good or bad? That's the question we just asked, and that is also in the database. So that pretty much wraps up the Django tutorial. The One of the interesting things to keep in mind is the adapter that's being used. So I'll, I'll spend some time talking about that right now. So if you open up uh, the Django folder again and go to the requirements.txt file, you will see all the prereq prerequisites of the Django application. So of course, it requires Django, a few other packages, and the most interesting one, Django PyODBC Azure. So this is the adapter that allows Django to talk to SQL Server. So in your requirements file, just throw this in there, modify the settings.py's database's JSON object, and you are pretty much all set. That wraps up our Django demo. Next, we're going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks. We're going to try to see how you can use SQL Server out of the box from the browser using the Jupyter Notebooks that you have on Azure today. To get started with Jupyter Notebooks and SQL Server, all you need is a web browser and an active Azure subscription. So let's go ahead and open up a web browser. I'm using Firefox. All right, so let's go to notebooks.azure.com backslash library. Go ahead and hit enter. All right, it's going to make me sign in. All right, so it tells me I have two notebooks. Let's just go ahead and create a new one and call it Connect 2016. 
So it'll probably take a second or two to connect. Once it's done, uh, go ahead and click on it. Um, you shouldn't have any notebooks in there by default, so let's go ahead and create one using Jupyter. So Jupyter is pretty simple. You go ahead and click on New, and I'm gonna select Python 2 for my notebook. At this point, Jupyter knows that you're trying to create a new notebook. It takes a few seconds, um, it should be running. The way you can confirm that it's running is if you see this thing called in with square brackets, that's pretty much a sign that your notebook was instantiated and you're good to go. At this point, you can put your Python code here and it will run on the server and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. So let's say you wanna do some machine learning or data analytics. Um, you can do all of that by connecting to your SQL server. So for simplicity, I have a very small script. Um, gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it. So as you can see, it's gonna import the PyODBC module. Um, you, pen, you mentioned your server name, so I'm gonna use an Azure SQL database here. It's called SampleDB. That's my username and password. Once your script that you wanna run on Jupyter server is ready, just go ahead and press Shift Enter from your keyboard. There you go, so it tells you you were able to connect. Uh, we wanted to see the version, so that's what we're seeing right now. This query could be anything. You can do all kinds of complicated uh, joins and try to get some meaningful answers. All of this will run on Jupyter and PyODBC, the module required to connect the SQL Server from Jupyter is already on the system, so you don't need to do any extra setup here. I hope you enjoyed the demos we went through today. Please check out our Python connectors on GitHub. I'll also check out some of the new documentation for how to get started with different programming languages on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Connect with us on Twitter. Our Twitter handles are in the slide deck. And if you have any questions regarding what we saw today, please email me at meetb at microsoft.com or tweet at meet underscore Thanks for watching.